We are joined today by dermatologist Dr. Debra Dorrell at Novant Health Premier Medical Associates, and we're talking about the importance of sunscreen and skin cancer and awareness and things of that nature. All right, so um, let's go on since we were talking about sunburn. Um, when you get a sunburn, what can you do to relieve the pain? So the first thing is to get out of the sun. Um, if you're still in it, make sure you seek shade um, and make sure you're in a cool environment. It can be helpful to take multiple short, cool showers or baths, just a couple minutes to calm down and cool down the skin. And then while you're still a little bit damp after rinsing off, apply a lotion that's either aloe vera based or soy based. Um, if you have a lot of pain from it, because they can be pretty painful, I recommend some over-the-counter um, pain medicines like Tylenol or ibuprofen, as long as your doctor hasn't said you can't have one of those. And you should drink extra water. It's a big tax on the skin to repair itself after getting sunburned. So the more you hydrate, the um, better that'll be. Um, those are the main things. And just avoid getting out back into the sun while you're still burnt. When you do start to peel, don't pick at the flakes. Just let that naturally happen. Ugh, yes, okay, that was gonna be another question for sure. All right, we have a couple of questions that people are texting in. Uh, this person says, if you're alone, how do you get sunscreen on your back? That's a great question. So there are a couple options. One is if you have a spray and you have enough shoulder mobility, you should be able to get a pretty broad spray back there. Second is you could just wear a UPF shirt instead of having to put sunscreen on at all. And third, you can buy back applicators. A lot of people do this if they have eczema on their back or need to put lotion on for other reasons. Um, you can find them on Amazon. They kind of, on Amazon, they kind of look like spatulas. You just use it to roll it on there. Oh, interesting. Okay, good to know. Um, this person says, I like having a tan. Can I still tan while I wear sunscreen? That's a great question. So as a dermatologist, I don't love it when people tan in general. I think it's a common misconception that if you tan without getting red or burn, that you're not causing any damage to your skin. But unfortunately, any change in color to your skin is saying that your cells were damaged and they're trying to protect themselves from further damage. So I say no to tanning or trying to change color at all throughout the summer. Um, you certainly can still get color if you're wearing sunscreen and not applying appropriately or frequently enough. All right, this person says, many people with a low immune system are allergic to sunscreens. I heard that wearing baby rash creams could help. That's interesting. So a lot of baby rash creams, uh, which you might think of as a thick white paste, they're made from zinc oxide or some of the other minerals that are typically used as mineral sunscreens. Um, and it is true that mineral sunscreens are much less irritating to skin than chemical ones are. So yes, if you find yourself being irritated by most sunscreens that you've tried, try a mineral based one. I would recommend a sunscreen marketed product rather than baby cream, because that's like 40% zinc oxide, um, which is really, really thick and white. Okay, gotcha. This person is asking, is it true one bad ray of sun can cause skin cancer? In other words, you don't have to get burned to develop skin cancer. So the relationship between skin cancer and the sun is a little complicated, and I can't say for sure, um, yes or no to that question. What we do know is there are certain types of skin cancers that are more prevalent from one or two bad burns when you were young. And then there are some that really depend more on years of chronic sun exposure to accumulate sun damage to pop up the skin cancers. So any sunburn from young to old can increase your risk of skin cancer. Okay, so let's talk about this. What should you do if you find an unusual bump or mole on your skin? Yes, I think that causes a lot of anxiety for a lot of patients that we see when they have a new bump or a bump that is changing or growing. And so I recommend either seeing your primary care to just get it briefly checked out and maybe refer to dermatology or go right to a dermatologist, depending on if you need a referral or not. Um, I am happy to do spot checks at any time. I would much rather people come in, I look at something and it's totally normal than them to lose any sleep about it or for us to miss something that could have been caught early. Yeah, and I think people think, oh, well, it's so small, I don't need to make an appointment. I just won't do that yet. Exactly. 
Um, so even small things can be dangerous. Usually skin cancers do start off as really small and they grow slowly for the most part, except for more scary cancer, which is melanoma. But the smaller you get it, the small, the easier it is to treat and the less obvious scar you have, the less inherent risk of it spreading. So the smaller, the better as far as catching them. Okay, so here's another question. Is a daily face moisturizer needed? Like some people, you know, they don't even wash their face before they go to bed at night. They wash it in the morning, that's it. Um, and then they think that moisturizer only if my skin feels tight. Does everyone need a daily face moisturizer? Honestly, no, not everyone does. Everyone has different type of skin. If you have a drier complexion or skin type, then yes, I would recommend a daily moisturizer. If you're more oily, putting on moisturizer might make you break out or they might make your skin feel too tacky. So I think it somewhat depends. But I, that's with the caveat that as we have birthdays, as we get older, uh, we do lose some natural moisturizing factor in our skin. So I do think it becomes more important to make a moisturizer part of your daily routine as you age. Okay, and is that something like, hey, everyone who's over the age of 30 who might be listening, you need a moisturizer? Is it older than that? Is it younger than that? I would say it is case to case dependent. Um, I would probably 35 and up, we'll say. Okay, and so is it beneficial to put it on morning and night or do we just put it on night because we're just gonna sleep with it and it's gonna do the most, you know, then? I think it's just better to make it part of your routine. I say wake up, wash your face. It could be with plain old water or a cleanser. Put your moisturizer on and then put on your daily SPF. And then before bed, wash your face, moisturize, and then you're good to go. Okay, all right. We're taking your questions, of course. Anything that is uh, sun-related when it comes to your skin. Uh, the number is 336-379-5775. We'll be right back.